Welcome back to the news, everybody. We've got great stories today. Right, Bungie, legal actions are continuing and they're getting rather theatrical, so that's quite fun. We've got the Callisto Protocol devs, well, um, some of them getting laid off. Also, the DLC maybe not delivering. Twitch, gambling, CSGO, there's a big thing going on. If you've got a rough number for um, how much money a guy called Jeff got offered to promote some CSGO gambling within one month, uh, leave your guess down below. We'll get to it later. And for our first story, a bunch of players wanting to transfer their Diablo 4 characters, but a glitch, uh, well, letting them do that, and them getting banned for it. Yeah, little bit awkward. So there's a glitch doing the rounds in D4. It was found by a channel called Glitch Unlimited, and it does what a lot of people have been asking for. You see, the MMO-like systems of Diablo 4 don't extend to people bringing their hard level characters over to the first season of content. And while Blizzard have talked about potentially being able to bring over the models, so no, you know, stat or level transfer, like say in Diablo 3, this is a glitch that solves that problem. So again, just to be clear, this is the idea of being able to move your character over to the seasonal realm but of course in terms of power and all of that it being completely reset because for a bunch of people they just want the fantasy of like that's my character in the game i want to play my character which obviously does not mesh with the very you know like total reset heavy uh, seasonal model of the arpg genre now this is an interesting process it required people to be on the seasonal realm with a group and then to turn their internet connection off and then come back with their eternal character and basically of their choosing and this would essentially allow them to move their eternal realms character over to the seasonal realm but there were some caveats because you couldn't actually engage with the malignant heart system but you could benefit from the seasonal blessing xp boosts and you could transfer items over to your seasonal realm stash which obviously could mean you could kind of like power up another character. I also wonder if there's something interesting going on there with how Malignant Hearts and all of that, how they are like coded, right? Like how is it that these characters cannot inter um, interact with that if they are in that realm? But anyway, because this is a glitch that is related to player power, if, uh, if you do that, yeah, you can be punished. That certainly is the expectation the players have. Now, of course, because power of now, of course, because character power is involved here, everybody did expect that Blizzard would probably ban for this, and at least per some recent posts on the subreddit, yes, people are getting banned. So, is this a humongous drama or some crazy thing? No, but it is interesting that a bug did allow for this to happen, and I think it brings up that idea of, like, what do people actually want? It seems to me that moving Diablo 4 into the direction of like the more MMO-like game experience, but then still keeping some familiar trappings and then not having like a turbo big deep end game, it seems to me that that basically hasn't really worked out that well. The idea of like rolling a new seasonal character, like if it had a end game you could get to super quickly and then it was all like, you know, very, very brisk and uh, I don't know, some crazy Diablo 3-like stuff, then I could sort of deal with the whole seasonal model and the reset that's a little bit more okay but right now it's just yeah do you want to level up to 100 because you need to get it to 100 to get all your power on board uh like points and stuff and to me that's just not really fun there's not enough meat to the end game it's a bizarre experience then certainly one that makes me want to either play diablo 3 for its faster pace or uh, go and see what's cooking in path of exile because it does seem that their seasons are a bit more exciting now before i get to our next story i should say we made a game called Pill Beyond. We're a game studio. And if you go to store.bellular.games, you can support our team and get some really awesome collector's edition merchandise. As an example, here is the art book we put together. Lovely, big, hardback book. It's the art and making of, so there's plenty of insights there from the team. That's store.bellular.games. And of course, the link to our game on Steam is down below. Craziest thing, I checked our Steam score recently and the recents were at 98%, which kind of blew my mind. Okay, let's go on to the story with Twitch then, and the banning of uh, skin gambling promotion. Yes, are Twitch capable of feeling uh, shame? Who knows? Maybe. But this all happened after a pretty damn incredible piece of reporting by, I, I think it's supposed to be like, how good game? Okay, there's like a running joke that nobody can pronounce this guy's uh, name and everyone just calls him Jeff. I'm just going to call him Jeff, right? Jeff. 
Jeff did a did a breakdown, did a whole big thing, uh, basically about the dangers of skin gambling. This is uh, 47 minutes long. It's like a full documentary length video. It is absolutely terrific. Um, as an example, he was offered 120,000 euro a month for promoting of gambling. And uh, even in terms of the footage he's able to find of people like in the crowd at a CS tournament, skin gambling on their phone. It's like, yeah, it's pretty damn rough. It was one of those things. Uh, do you all remember when it exploded? I think Syndicate, the YouTuber was involved. Uh, it exploded a decent few years back. It was extremely dramatic. I think a lot of people just kind of assumed it was dealt with, uh, but the reality is that no, it, it was not. So in terms of some uh, interesting statistics, here's, here's a few of them. 53.8% percent of his 9,227 survey respondents had been introduced to skin gambling by watching content creators. And per his research, and per his research, 80% of CSGO content creators are promoting skin gambling. That is crazy to me, but it's not all that surprising. As an example, right? Um, sports betting. Uh, it's a really massive problem in the UK. And uh, whenever I was using a streaming service that has advertisements, I think it was the Channel 4 one. And the thing that shocked me was every single time, I think I was watching the Eric Andre show, right? So, you know, sitting there watching Eric Andre show, bam, I get like two adverts. You see those two adverts? I could like 50% of the time, it was sky betting or some other gambling site. And every single advert was about gambling responsibly. It was completely insane to me. So thinking about the ravenous impact of sports betting here, uh, then of course all of this happening in CSGO, I am not surprised. Um, the gambling industry generates a absolutely goofy quantity of money. Uh, so that 80% of CSGO uh, people are promoting that is not a surprise. I mean, you, especially because there is the notion there of being able to cash out, it's just like a second as you get a cash out potential there, what happens is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, and you are dealing with 50 grand, 100 grand. And these, uh, you know, for these content creators, it's like, hey, do you want to do a 90 second spot uh, about this a few times a month? We'll give you 120 grand. I mean, there you go. That's that has multiple times more than what I earn a year. Like how many people are just going to say, yes, let's do that. Uh, to be clear, me personally, not me, like the organization, right? Um, you know, it's completely cracked. Like, there's just life-changing amounts of money per month. It's like what happened with the FTX thing. You know, they were just dump trucks of money. Um, that's the way that it went. So that is how you get so much exposure going on, right? That's like, that's the crazy stuff. In the video, he basically makes the point that Twitch should be considering this under their existing policies for gambling content and sponsorships. Now, in theory, this was always the case, right? But obviously, rules were not being forced. That This was just happening everywhere. The thing is, though, Twitch have actually taken some action. They've explicitly added a section to their terms of service that calls out skin gambling promotion. And this happened a week after the video went live. So, can we 100% say there was a causal effect? No. Does it absolutely seem like that's the case? Yeah, which does mean, damn, like, good work, Jeff. Here's what they've said. Is sponsorship of skins gambling, such as for CSGO skins, allowed on Twitch? No. Promotion or sponsorship of skins gambling is prohibited under our policy. So, this is really good news for the audience, right? 80% of the streamers who were doing this are now, you know, in breach of a terms of service, so they're probably not happy. Um, of course, their bank balances are no longer going to be lined with tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of, uh, you know, subsidized, like, gambling money which is good, right? So, you know, because fuck that whole situation. I suppose the only thing we could say, though, is is this 100% watertight from Twitch? Because the word promotion could be taken a few different ways, right? Like, promotion. Does that extend to the act of just streaming you doing it on camera, right? Um, because while people may not be, uh, you know, paid to promote it, Maybe they'll still do it anyway, right? And, uh, you know, we already do literally have cases where content creators were directing impressionable viewers to sites that they own. Uh, you know, it does kind of defang the whole situation. Uh, so, with that in mind then, we've definitely got a few turbulent weeks ahead with Twitch. How will they roll this out? Or will they just flake out of enforcement? As far as I'm concerned, if this is the rule, you need to be strict and you need to be thorough. There is no other way uh, about it. Absolutely, though, with the skin gambling, like, 
that's unregulated, unlicensed, it is hoovering in lots of, you know, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, 14 year olds, people who do not have a fully developed brain yet, who really shouldn't be gambling. Yeah, absolute bad stuff. It's good to see there's some change there. Next then, the Callisto Protocol. It was an extremely expensive game to make and uh, oh man, it yeah, kind of was a bit of a squib at launch, wasn't it? So, uh, Striking Distance are the studio, Crafton are the people who own them, and they've laid off 32 staff in a move that has been independently confirmed to IGN. They say that this is, uh, you know, strategic changes that align with the studio's priorities to better position its current and future projects for success. The company did say that they will be supporting the people and trying to find new roles, and they're also making uh, meaningful severance packages. Of course, there was other broad stories floating around with uh, this studio and the game, right? Significant allegations of crunch, some people being omitted from the game's credits, and a pretty tumultuous situation where, of course, the game itself was overshadowed by the Dead Space remake. If you look here, we have an open critic rating fair, a top critic average of 67, 43% uh, recommending, right? And in terms of sales, it does seem to have failed to meet expectations. Analysts are dropping their sales forecasts to 2 million copies, and this is in spite of a reported budget of $161.5 million over three years for development costs alone, so that is not including marketing. Now, there were some hopes that DLC released this summer may, uh, you know, give us a stronger future, right? Um, but the final uh, DLC, which was meant to be the grand continuation of the story, was not really a resounding success. Uh, here's just the tweet. The Callisto Protocol DLC was honestly embarrassing. Same boring combat loop, no music for most of it, extremely predictable story twist, two actual cutscenes, a horrible ending that felt like IP abandonment. S uh, sad to see a game I had such hype for end up this way. That's kind of rough. And to go over some other opinions, like here's Jewel Shocker saying it's not the redemption they were hoping for. Uh, this was kind of mad. Um, PlayStation uh, Lifestyle.net, just a little three out of 10. Uh, quite a few rough reviews for it as well, which really is unfortunate. I was, I had very high hopes, to be honest. I really wanted that to be a, a great situation with that game. Next then, the Bungie Legal situation. So take this for an opening gambit. The days of Destiny 2 cheaters being free to engage in a wholesale assault on the Destiny 2 game and its community without fear of consequences are over. Those are the opening words of the latest round of Bungie's lawsuits against the distributors and creators of a cheat program called Ring One. And the summary here is that they already reached settlements in three court cases that began in 2021 against distributors of these cheats, though those individuals weren't found liable. Uh, but with that backing them, they've now actually targeted 50 individuals, as well as the company behind Ring One itself. So that's a fairly significant step up in things. They basically argued that there's been clear legal and media coverage and the company's continued actions in selling the software basically cannot be taken as being unaware that they're doing something uh, wrong, right? So there's a list of allegations and they're demanding compensation for it. It's a pretty steep list, uh, nearly 50 defendants across the globe. So they certainly do have their legal work cut out for them. And here are the allegations, right? Uh, copyright infringement, civil RICO, uh, which is racketeering, wire fraud, criminal copyright infringement, money laundering, circumvention of technical measures in violation of the DMCA, violations of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, breach of contract, interference with contractual relations, and civil conspiracy. Hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's all delightful. Uh, now, especially considering the way in which the previous cases have went, though, I think Bungie are probably just, they just want to get wins here so they can set more legal precedents so they can just continually knock this stuff out. you got to remember, this stuff actually does cost Bungie a lot. Cheaters in online games, they cost havoc, they reduce your revenue as a company, yada, yada, yada. Now, it would be... Uh, interesting if i admitted that i know what's going on with bungie because like right now obviously yeah they did release their state of the game update people are not happy uh we're on it i want to talk about that when i've got full knowledge of what's going on perhaps expect a video like tomorrow or at least quite soon on that story does seem to be a damn spicy one to round things off then so this is kind of cool uh the final fantasy spiritual successor from the creator of the series hironobu sakaguchi might actually be coming to pc because yes a steam page for fantasian has appeared and the game of course originally came out on apple arcade in 2021 it's got a pretty crazy visual style where the environments are actually real life 
life dioramas and uh, the combat apparently was a pretty exceptional uh, challenge. If you've got Apple Arcade, totally worth checking out. It's a holy like crazy and bizarre uh, way to actually make a game with the real life dioramas but i think it's very creative it's very interesting and it was well received so great that we could actually see that on the pc platform also in i mean a story that we've all been waiting for the, the the desert we finally reached the oasis because after surviving for five months of no multiplayer service for mario kart 8 and splatoon 2 on our favorite game console the wii u uh they're back yeah that's a crazy gap in service uh but again it was using a wii u kind of bizarre and the final story is that the vampire survivors director's cut exists it is playable and it has been played by precisely one person Laura Kate Dale's the only person who has played this um outside of course of like the the actual developer and people that they know um yeah this is a curious situation that occurred at a preview event for the upcoming co-op mode where um yeah she was pulled aside and given access to this director's cut looks kind of neat basically it's got new characters new stages new bosses as well as entirely new mechanics related to those things but the devs were not forthcoming on that when this is exactly going to happen unlike something which i will be forthcoming about which is the fact that it's the end of today's video and i'm going to say check out store.bellio.games i'm getting the production orders uh for these in i will be making those orders on the 11th of august so uh hop in uh by then to uh, be 100 percent sure of getting stuff there's this there's a collector's edition also our big vinyl oh the deluxe vinyls like two disc vinyl is so cool anyway store.value.games one of the best ways to uh support our team if you haven't played the game yet well people really do seem to love it and the link to that is down below as always thank you for uh tuning in we're gonna have videos every day this week so sub for that and i'll see you next time